We're going to talk for a few minutes about a vernier scale. Um, <clears throat> this, this illustration here shows a device called a vernier caliper. So if I was trying to uh, measure an object, um, like the outside dimension of an object, a um, piece of wood or a piece of metal, put it here in between the jaws of, of the caliper, you're going to squeeze it down until the caliper touches either side of your object. That's simple enough. And <clears throat> you have to be careful here that you don't try to read the, the uh, scale starting at this edge of the jaw. You have to start from the zero. Now the thing is made so that when this jaw is tight against this jaw, that zero lines up with that zero. And that's how you get your measurement. So here we see the zero is somewhere in between the one and the two, and um, <coughs> more specifically, in between the uh, 1.1 and 1.2, right there. Now, <coughs> that wouldn't be bad. You could you could estimate that. Well, it's you know, it's a little more than 1.1. Uh, it's closer to 1.2. You know, 1.17, one, whatever. You could just make a guess as to what that is, as to what it is. But when we look here, these lines. Um, start out as you go move to the right of the, the zero mark there's a certain distance between this line and this line how much how well they line up with one another and as you move to the right that distance is getting a little bigger and a little bigger and that is, those lines are getting closer and closer to the ones on the left we get closer there 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 and you can see right about the number six right here this line finally lines up with one of these lines up here. Now, which one of these up on top doesn't really matter, but the fact that the six lines up pretty much perfectly with that line means that six is our reading here, okay? So that tells us it's 1.16 centimeters, uh, this, this uh, distance right here. You go 1.1 plus some fraction, and the fraction tells you, oh, it's this one. And if, once you get to this, this closest mark here, pretty soon the, the um, marks start to move to the left of the ones on top. So, that's, so you find the one in here that lines up the very best. That's the nature of a vernier scale. Okay, and it's a, just, it's a way for you to get a measurement that's more accurate than just the main scale reading, right? And is um, this, this one here points to, with this careful reading, gives you that next fraction of accuracy, okay? Now the next thing we're gonna do, I'm gonna turn, uh, change the screen here, and we're gonna look at a, um, <clears throat> one of these on, on a, um, what should we call it, on a protractor. Okay, so there are um, same same as that caliper measurement. You can have a protractor device, and here you would again find your hole measurement. This would be called the main scale here. This is the vernier scale down here. And as you go along here, you would say. 25 degrees, 26, 27, 20, uh, 28, right there. You're just, the zero is just past the 28. So you know you have 28 whole degrees in this measurement, right? Now we go along here and look for the line that lines up the best. And here, of course, now in this picture, they've, they've done us a nice uh, favor here and put this big red arrow pointing at it. If you look carefully, you can see that, you know, they're closer, closer, closer. This one almost lines up. This one really lines up well. And then this one starts to go to the left of that next mark. So this, this is the one that is correct. And so now notice here, these are 0 to 60 on the vernier scale. Well, if you think about um, measure, measurement degree, degree measurements, you take a 60th of a degree, 
That is called a minute. So these measurements here are talking about minutes and fraction, yeah, minutes of a degree. And so we find that 15 lines up best. So that's 28 degrees, 15 minutes. Okay? And then 15 minutes is 15 sixtieths of a degree. It's one fourth of a degree. It would be uh, 28 degrees, 28 and one fourth degrees would be the measurement it's indicated by this um, particular uh, <clears throat> this particular vernier scale. Okay, so that's going to be uh, how we use a vernier scale with a protractor, and that's going to be really important to us later in our um, uh, indirect measurement projects. But for now, what I'm anxious for you for you all to learn is is how to read a vernier scale and how to um, construct your own vernier scale. So I'll show that to you next. So the instructions for this activity tell us that we're going to create a main scale and a vernier scale on a couple of index cards, right? And <clears throat> we know that the main scale is going to be the larger units, the, um, the whole units, and the vernier scale is going to indicate the fractions, right? Now, the tricky part is um, they're not the same size spaces that you draw. So your main scale is going to be your actual units. And in order to do the vernier scale, you, you draw these units as um, <clears throat> nine-tenths of the size of the main scale. Now, for, for simplicity's sake, on our example, okay, uh, and, um, and what I showed you in the um, in the the example on board was uh, where you were going to tenths of a millimeter, right? This is going to be really simple from the standpoint that our big our main scale is going to be centimeters, and our vernier scale is just going to be finding the tenth of a centimeter, which is a millimeter. Right? So it's, it's really not going to be accomplishing a whole lot except to illustrate the notion of the, um, <clears throat> the vernier scale. Right? I'm going to um, try to bring this around here so you can see exactly what I'm doing. I don't know if I can, um, I'm sorry, I don't know if I can get the camera to see the paper really well. I really would like for you to be able to read it as I draw it. Okay, so let's see what that looks like. Maybe just a little touch wider. Um, okay, let's see what this looks like. <clears throat> so I'm going to start from the left-hand side of this, this piece of paper. And in, in this instance, um, the zero is going to be the edge of the, the paper. Okay, it's not like in there where you have a, a separate zero mark. We're going to use the edge of the paper here as a zero, and we're going to use the edge of the, the, the vernier scale part as a zero. All right? So I'm going to line up my ruler here, and I'm just going to mark off um, uh, centimeters on this, on this edge of this index card. Now, if you don't have an index card, <clears throat> that's really okay. You can do the same thing just by taking a piece of printer paper <clears throat> or notebook paper and just folding it over to get kind of a, a sturdy edge on it. All right? So here we go. I'm marking off whole centimeters, and I'm going to number them. After I mark them off on this card. Try to be as neat as you can. And <clears throat> actually what I should do is do it this way so I can um, actually see the, uh, <clears throat> I can see the uh, edge of the paper right up against the room. All right. <clears throat> Sorry for that. Here we go. Okay. 
Okay, so now I'm making these every whole centimeter, right? All the way across <clears throat> as far as I can go. And I'm going to number them one. Hello. Okay, so here <clears throat> I've got my whole centimeters. Remember that in this example, the edge of the card is going to be the zero mark. <clears throat> and I'm going to number these. As my whole my whole um, centimeter. This would be considered the main scale. Okay, and I'm going to write that here, main scale. Okay, see that I hope? Good. Then, <clears throat> on this one, I am measuring my vernier scale. And as it tells me in the instructions, the size of these marks is the distance between these marks. Of course, the edge of the, of the, edge of the card is zero, and the distance between these is each nine-tenths of the main scale size. So in this case, it's nine-tenths of a centimeter, right? which is not terribly hard to do, but we'll go ahead and uh, finish that up. Okay, and now <clears throat> I'll label this vernier scale, and I'll number these one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so those are number one through ten. Now, <clears throat> when you mar match these up, you can see that the space between them is different. The spacing, you know, the space between this, this, this um, vernier marks, the space between them, is smaller than the space between the main scale. So that when I line this up at zero, you can see that the one on the vernier scale is a little to the left of the of the one, and the two is a little more to the left of the two, and so on. But it should come back to being matching up right about where the ten matches up with the nine on the main scale okay <clears throat> so that that's pretty good now that <clears throat> the next is a part of your assignment is to draw some random length lines on your piece of paper on a piece of uh, either notebook paper or on some printer paper and then we're going to use that um, scale to try to uh, measure the length of those lines right so um, I'll do something here. And they, their lines uh, probably should not be terribly long for this because it's going to, um, your, your vernier scale is only going to be good up to a, <clears throat> a certain length. So um, yeah, <clears throat> I would stick with lines that aren't very long. Um, okay, now, in order to measure this line, I place my main scale up against the line right here and get the end of my main scale even with the end of the line, like that. Then I'm going to bring my vernier scale against my main scale, slide it over here until it matches up with the, uh, the, the edge of this card is going to match up with the end of that line. And then I'm going to try to read um, what result I got. Let me see if I can do this here in a way you can see it. OK, 
Okay, that looks pretty good right there. And when I look across here at my, um, <clears throat> my vernier scale, the one that comes closest is going to be the six. As I look, the, you know, like the one is a good ways to the right of the first mark, and the two is closer, 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 right here. The six is really close to this, the whole mark here. So the six is going to be our, um, our fraction. So we said it's a, a, a two whole centimeters plus six tenths of a centimeter. So this is 2.6 centimeters. We know that's, you know, 26 millimeters, but, but for the sake of this exercise, 2.6 centimeters right there. And I'm going to write that answer right on my page. And then I'm going to ask you to do the same thing as far as creating a, a main scale and a vernier scale and measuring your lines. Okay, I'll put this one here like that. Put this one here and bring it up against a thing. It's three, three centimeters plus some fraction. I'll look on here and see which lines up the best. Well, that's interesting. That uh, looks like six, cent six tenths again, so 3.6 centimeters. I certainly hope they aren't all. I was just trying to be you know, kind of random in my construction here. If they all end up being 0.6, that will be uh, odd. No, this, will, this one will not be 0.6. This one, <clears throat> on the other hand, looks a lot like it's a uh, right on the whole centimeter. No, I would go 9 there. 9 is probably the closest. This one here, that 9 is the, the closest. So this one would be uh, 4.9. 4.9 centimeters, okay, and so on. So look, <clears throat> so I'm again, what I'm doing here is lining, I'll do this last one if I can hold it up in front of the camera better, right? First I'm holding the, the main scale up against the end of the paper. Boy, I'm not doing real well here, I'm telling you. Okay, the main scale up against the end of the paper like that, and find the whole centimeter. So this is this is six centimeters plus some fraction. Then I come along here and bring the card, the vernier scale card up against the end of the line. Right there. And where that comes on here, looks to me like the closest one is the three. Right, the one that it's closest to the main scale, the closest vernier mark to the main scale is a three, so this would be 6.3 centimeters. So <clears throat> the assignment then, as it says in this packet, is in this packet in this you know this document, is to create a, a main scale like this, right? And if like I said, if you don't have a um, if you, if you do not own <coughs> or have, have handy any index cards, you can simply take a piece of paper and just fold the edge to make it kind of sturdy, right? So we make a main scale like this with centimeters. We make a vernier scale like this with nine-tenths of a centimeter spacing so that it lines up this way, keeping both, making the edge of both of these the zero, right? And then, then make, I would, I would like you to do five, five sample lines Okay, five lines here of differing lengths and use your, your scale to measure them and um, come up with numbers. Now when you guys go to turn this in, aside from taking a picture of this and a picture of this, you're going to take a couple pictures where you show me that, you've used, that you're using your, your uh, vernier cards <coughs> to measure, say, maybe two of these lines, right, like, go like that go like this, get it all lined up nice and neat, right? And then uh, take a picture of that, that whole setup for me, so I can see that you've done it the right way. Okay? All right, great.